Hi, my name is Kim Mancosa. I'm one of the lead sales engineers here at ACT. And if you're like me, you watched that Netflix documentary on the partial meltdown at TMI. Here in Lancaster, we're quite close to Three Mile Island. And so seeing the concern of the citizens and how they were very afraid of nuclear after that happened is something that is interesting. I find that nuclear is one of the only technologies that can actually replace coal and get us out of using typical fossil fuels. Other renewables such as wind, hydro, solar are awesome, but they're very geographically based and are not reliable on demand unless we have some sort of thermal storage. So the idea here is to actually adapt and change into a nuclear that is sufficient and more widely accepted in the community. We'll take a look at what the common reactor is. So our standard reactor is similar to Three Mile Island. You have your uranium-235 fuel rods that go through a fission reaction. The fission reaction splits the atom into two different atoms. That fission releases a ton of thermal energy. The thermal energy is, is absorbed in the cooling fluid in the reactor. Cool, the fluid then moves to the steam generator, steam reactor. The steam then goes to the turbine, turbine spins and generates electricity. So that's how we convert our nuclear energy to electric energy. Now, in a newer micro reactor, we actually use heat pipes. So you have the same sort of application. Here you have your uranium-235 fuel rods, but then we actually have heat pipes right next to those fuel rods. And the heat pipes move the heat to our heat exchanger, which then our heat exchanger is used to generate electricity or for whatever else we need that heat. Now, breaking down the heat pipe, we have our thermal energy in. A heat pipe is a passive two-phase heat transfer device. You have your envelope material, your working fluid, and your work structure. So as the heat comes in at that hot spot, the working fluid vaporizes. The vapor then moves to the center of the tube due to a slight pressure difference that occurs and then condenses at the area that's cooler and releases that thermal energy to our heat exchanger. The condensed fluid then returns back to the hot spot, either via gravity or capillary action of that wick structure. Now we'll pick a working fluid based on the temperature of the operation. So for nuclear, we're looking in that 650 C range, which typically will use some form of alkaline metal, like a sodium or potassium. This is gonna operate in that widely accepted nuclear range and is most commonly used in these types of micro reactors. So the next time you're watching that TMI documentary and wondering where the nuclear industry has turned and what they're doing, think of ACT and heat pipes and micro reactors and get excited about where the realm of energy is turning and how we're gonna be able to get off fossil fuels in the near future. Thank you. Thanks for watching an episode of Engineers with Markers. We'd appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Then make your way on down to the description for more resources. If you've got a question, leave it in the comments or visit the contact page on our website to talk with an engineer.